I'm going to go back to the final round of the season at uh, for uh, GT7 Group 3 here. This is their uh, Le Mans, the famous Le Mans. Uh, this is always look, this is up there for me, is one of the races you always want to do. You know, you've got either the Monaco Grand Prix, you've got, you know, uh, Indianapolis or Daytona or some sort of oval. Uh, you know, this is obviously one of our, our favorite races. So, or, you know, one of our, I guess, famous races. So I was excited to take this challenge, especially after Bathurst, how poorly that went. This is one of the endurance races, so more points for grabs here. Uh, it's 12 laps. There's a, a unique way that this track works. I'm in the Mercedes. I had a choice of uh, the, because of the weeks I've missed. There's the Alfa Romeo, which Aaron is using, so I can't use that. Uh, this, the Mercedes, which I had originally saved for this event. And then there's the Subaru, which I thought was just a little bit too slow uh, in a straight line. So we're going to take you through a lap of Le Mans. This is a, yeah, the Mercedes, I believe, has actually been patched. So this wouldn't have been much of an advantage for me as it maybe would have been at the start of the season. But alas, can't be controlling about that. Uh, we only got really one flying lap because coming out of the pits on mediums, come in for softs, an out lap, and then obviously just one flying lap then. So it's not as much time. Break into this chicane here. I didn't, I went quite deep. So I, quite, I probably originally immediately lost like half four tenths half a second so not ideal uh, this is one of the few places like there are other places you can make up time but it's hard to make up that much time you can only really lose time i'd say it's tougher to make up time there's only a couple sections you can really make up a lot of time really if you make a mistake early on so it's kind of difficult for that reason anyway head on to the first of the, the uh, big straights here there's uh, quite a few of them here so this is one this is one of the first just want to try and not exceed track limits track limits around this place is pretty strict so I thought that would be more of an issue in the race, and it was to an extent, So, but you have to be careful. In terms of a reference point, I, I use the man on the left-hand side. You can break a little bit later if you're on the softs. Um, try and get nice and turned in, slow down, but not understeer too far wide. Again, that's a clean that's a clean exit, I would say. A decent chicane there, and we got another long straight. Again, you could, be, you could uh, reflect on your whole life story if you want, heading down this straight, if you really want. It's uh, Take time to settle your accounts and all that kind of shite uh, there is that much time down the straights here so and the same kind of thing you don't want to you can carry a bit of speed not understeer too wide but use all the track at the same time careful not to cut the corner too much get a penalty then onto another main straight i, I think i say main straight it's not really they're, like, they're all straights really this one isn't as long uh, as you kind of you kind of make a judgment call on this one uh, when you turn the corner here, I do a little bit after that little kink in the air, a little bit in the barrier. Uh, you need to be a little bit more careful on mediums compared to softs. With a clean exit, it's left some clean after the first, uh, after the first uh, chicane. Really, a bit of a longer straight this time as you're heading up the hill. Somewhat. Uh, once you kind of turn into this kink on the right-hand side and straighten out a bit, that's when you I choose to break. Uh, really after the curb, really. So. Try and straighten the car. The Mercedes, Mercedes is quite good in the brakes, to be fair, so that helps. Uh, I found the Alfa Romeo once when I used it there. The high speed braking, it wasn't quite stable uh, into this uh, brake of one of the, uh, I think it's the second the second marker board on the right, the advertising board. Another straight then before we head into the, uh, I would say, the infield part of the track, even though it's close to the end of the lap. Nice and easy, don't understeer too wide here. We're getting the power quite soon. And then a little bit of a lift as we head through this part. Not too much on softs. And then try and hug the right-hand side. I'll probably lose a bit of time through here. Uh, just trying to get back on the power. And then a kink in the left. Want to get on the power as soon as possible. That actually wasn't too bad, in fairness. This lap has actually been okay. It's, it's been solid, but not spectacular. Then for these last two chicanes, I think these are... I don't know if these are the poor chicanes, or... I have no idea. Uh, anyways, carry as much speed as you can through this part. Get slow down again. Try to take, take as much curb as you can, but don't upset the car too much on exit here. Clean exit. And 1042 is not. Or sorry, four minutes two seconds. It's fine. It's not spectacular. Uh, it was a clean lap, but not quick. I would say. It was good enough for P5 though, which I can't complain with. Uh, so I didn't expect to really last here. There's some quick drivers like Pagani's down there in tenth. Uh, we've got. T. Smith behind as well, so for that reason, I didn't, they didn't work out in their qualifying laps. So, last race, double points for me using my last wild card. So, let's see if we can get a good result here and uh, end the season on a high. We've got second place in the standings to try and consolidate. I think we're only about 10 or so points ahead of uh, I can't remember who it was. So, uh, but anyways, oh, here we go. Uh, bit of a decent start on uh, T. Smith then. Just really looking to try and settle in. You'll see the kind of the flow this race goes in. 
it's all about fuel management. If you, there's only six laps of fuel in the car or so. So you need to try and make it to the end of lap six to pit and then, yeah, go the rest of the race. So you can see constantly through this race, every single major break until I'm flicking through the power. So this level of fuel management is not required in, say, the Suzuki, which you're shifting a halfway through. This Mercedes is particularly thirsty. So I had to be on top of this for basically the majority of this race through every kind of major braking zone to go back down to six uh, on the power deployment and then up to one then on exit. So there was a lot of management involved. I knew this would kind of be a race where you kind of filter into your own kind of thing. You filter into your own race, you run to your own kind of thing, which I had been hoping was the case with Bathurst, but uh, for different reasons that kind of fell to shit. Anyways, not too much doing in this first part of this uh of this uh, of this race this first bit's fairly clean uh and the lap we're getting close to lap one then i was a little bit early in the brakes here i was struggling for a turn in on this particular corner and uh, didn't set me up great um bear launch with t smith but he's already got a penalty so you know i was like i don't want to lose time squabbling uh because i know he's going to get past him a, a couple of seconds later later so uh, you can see lee calls also got a penalty for himself as well so we're gonna get a little bit of margin take this place back uh, you can see the kind of the front four have already kind of bolted away. Uh, it's, it's clear I don't have the pace here to be fighting. A lot of the guys are in, some of the guys are in Suzuki, Aaron's in the uh, Alfa Romeo. Uh, yeah, this Mercedes, I think just, it came at the wrong time with the update. I, you know, I, I did a oh, big understeer mowing through there. That's uh, not ideal. Uh, T's going to be all over my ass. And Pagani is not too far away either. So we're actually going to stay on board with this. Um, tell you what. Nice move made here by T Smith. Just slides through. He's in the Subaru. You can actually hear it. Uh, you can always hear that Subaru. And then I didn't get the best exit. Uh, Pagani gets a really good run. I wasn't sure what to do at this point. Uh, didn't mean to actually come across him. Uh, but he's just going to see. Uh, going to give him the space. Uh, he's just going to pure do me on the brakes. Uh, I spoke a little bit earlier. So we've lost two positions then on lap one. Uh, yeah, but look. To Pagani and T Smith. Look, as you can really expect. Uh, to be fair. So... Yeah, okay, lap one, but like you can see, I've not got the pace. This managing of the fuel thing, I've got to do it to make it one stop work. That's the thing, I've got to do it. Uh, two stop here, I'd lose far too much time. So, anyways, there's a little mistake for blue flag in front, and Lee's on my ass as well. So, again, it's all about saving fuel. The mediums, actually, the tires are fine here. Uh, because I'm also heading on a higher fuel setting or lower fuel setting rather engine setting coming out of corners i'm not putting as much work through the, the the rear wheels on traction so that actually protects the rears a little bit but see the tires are fine it's just all about the fuel it's just managing the fuel that's the big issue here and this is what i have to do in the mercedes to manage this i didn't think it was as thirsty as it is not look my other choices weren't great anyway like i couldn't use alfa romeo and the Subaru, I just didn't think was a viable option. Uh, I'm not quick enough to make that work. La again, so lap number three. Go very deep into this corner. That's going to give Jonesy the run. Uh, so we're kind of slipping back through the field here. So it's not going great, but I kind of thought other people could be doing two stops, right? Like, does it, everyone going to make the one stop work? I, like, if I'm having to struggle as hard as this to make the one stop work, surely other people are going to be struggling as well. Uh, but no, this Mercedes is just flipping thirsty. Uh, there goes Jonesy. And look, we've used we use the Suzuki at Monza. We know how quick that thing is in a straight line, uh, and obviously it's super fuel efficient. Uh, I don't have any regrets not taking it. We got a win in Monza. Do you know what I mean? Like it's all you know, taking the good with the bad. Uh, lap number uh, five. I think Lee's had an off there, so we're going to gain one position on him. So we gain that back. So look, if nothing else, I was consistent here. If nothing else, I felt consistent. I felt that. We weren't making too many mistakes again penalties and that's all you can i think that's all you can really do i've i spent a lot of time practicing for this race so you know i do the best of the can with what i've got and this is what i've got to do to make this race work eventually i just thought maybe there would be more people doing two stop than one stop i'm trying to make things work and not i just yeah just thought not everyone would be doing as crazy fuel efficiency as i am uh jonesy lagged out of the session unfortunately for him that puts us back to seven you can see the gap to leads about two seconds uh so yeah it's kind of filtering in no man's land here. We're kind of quicker than the guys in front. Uh, kind of our consistency is, I think, I think is actually what's keeping us in front here rather than pure pace. Uh, I think Lee paid the lap before. No, he's actually having a couple with Panda. You can see how far we've pushed this. Everyone who was into the pits on the end of lap six, everyone's got the same idea. A couple of people going on to the mediums. I knew I could make a set of softs work to the end. I just thought that was worth the event. I just thought that was worth it. 
Um, had to break for the uh, pit lane here. <laughs> so we're going to go into set of softs and refill all the way up again. Not a lot of fuel in the cars here, which is why it's so on the edge. So there's a lot of... Uh, towards the end of the stint, it's able to lay off the, the, the fuel management a little bit and push it a little bit. But it's not for very long. You're getting half a lap, a lap at best, if even. So I just, yeah, it's you can make it work. It just takes a lot of management in this car. I would, be, I'm curious to see to know what, how others were handling the situation with their, their, uh, their fuel. It was just coming out in front of Panda and Lee then as well. So, yeah, we're still, look, we're still the second stint. We're on soft tires. You know, we've got the we've got the medium tire out of the way. We can make this work at least in our favor. But we've got to be consistent. I have to keep out. So yeah, it was yeah. The race, re like, it was very uneventful, really. It was just running my race. It was a little bit boring, I guess. I guess at the front may have been more entertaining, but... Lap 9, uh, Lee is 7 seconds behind, so he's got a bunch of penalties and such. I've kept it pretty consistent. I uh, haven't got any penalties as of yet. I think that would change. I did kind of... Uh, yeah, that would change a little bit through the stint. Uh, you can see how much time I actually have been squandered in, the, in this last, uh, these last three laps. Lap 12, here we are, end of the race. Lee, were, like, the gap was about three seconds at the start of the lap. These softs have gone off a bit. Uh, Lee, I did push a little bit in the stint as well. So Lee's on my ass. And I, <laughs> this was a little bit close for comfort. It wasn't as close as maybe this, this ending suggests. I had, I knew I had pace in hand, or like, time in hand. And he has a penalty here at the end as well. So, look, it, it was close. Lee was definitely quicker, don't get me wrong. And so was Panda. But our consistency has uh, helped us here. We're going to get P7 for our efforts. So, look, a solid result on the last race. Can't complain with that. Double points for a P7. It's not too bad at the end of the day at Le Mans. No, no only one penalty, really. No major mistakes. I think I had one moment in the chicane, Ooh, but that was it. But, yeah, long race. We got it done. 49 minutes, I think, in the end there. So, pretty long race as well. Uh, P7 <sighs> to end things, not too bad. Can't be too upset with that. We lost out positions to T. Smith and Pagani. You know, and Pagani won the flipping race. Fair play to him. Uh, T. Smith won the championship, so fair play to him. Well done. Uh, obviously, it's just a super consistent season. Here's where we end up. Finish P10. It's not, look, it's it's tough, obviously, but look, we missed the two weekends with, uh, with Blue Moon and uh, Brands Hatch, which I had two good cars in mind there with the Alfa Romeo and the, the uh, Subaru. We, if we got, you know, considering that if we say we got 10 points minimum from each race, we missed out on 40 points. You know, 40 points would put me close to, uh, hold on, close to the top six or so, top seven. So, you know, that's, that's not a bad, that, that would have been a bad season. And look, we had some, it was a tough season, you know, like we had, Sardinia B was quite tough and obviously Bath, we missed Blue Moon and Bathurst was a disaster. Made up some good ground back in uh, Tokyo. Lago Maggiore to start was pretty good. Uh, made up some good ground back in Tokyo. Monza had the win, and then obviously the the wheel disconnecting. Then uh, or whatever happened during during that race, we lost out on that. Missed out on Brands Hatch. Uh, yeah. So and there we are finishing Le Mans. So kind of topsy turvy season, ups and downs. Tokyo was great fun. Monza win was obviously great for different reasons, of course. Uh, Lago Maggiore was quite fun as well at the Honda begin that one. Yeah, to look, obviously, the, I do have, I do want to make a, a, an amends and a, uh, there's a vengeance in me to make up for what happened at Bathurst. Really tough stuff. Um, other than that, though, like, um, I did I threw, did everything I could to the season. I drove as well as I could. Um, wanted, always wanted to do my best for my teammate, Aaron, who was a fantastic, uh, fantastic all season long, I thought, just, just in terms of support and being there and obviously... Showing up, showing up consistently in the race as well. He had some tough races himself. But honestly, like, even just as a life thing through these eight weeks, you know, the, this season, it has been just a crazy, like, so much has happened in my life personally through this through this uh, eight weeks. All good stuff, mind you, don't get me wrong. Um, it's just crazy how different things looked from the start of the season to the end of the season. Uh, so, yeah, pretty pretty crazy stuff. Just... Yeah, I just thought this would be like any other season. You get through, like, I don't miss a lot of races, and you, you just get through it, and between work and otherwise, yeah, just uh, crazy. Just a crazy eight weeks, but uh, I'm glad for the ups and downs during the way. Look, the the downs, they, they, make you, they make you better, and the ups, obviously, they're worth celebrating. So, yeah, that's going to do it for this season of FTRL GT7. It'll probably take us long to get around to. Monza and Le Mans just took stupidly long for some reason. Um, but there we go. Uh, a lot is changing for next season. A lot is changing. We'll go through it. Uh, during that one, but that's not, not going to. There's not going to be a lot of turnaround. Like I hope to get that video out as soon as I can. Um, 
But there we go. That's going to do it for this season of GT7. It's been an absolute pleasure. It's been so much fun. And uh, looking forward to next season already. So yeah, thanks for watching. And until next time.